Hello everyone, my name is Kathik Lunkad, and today I'm going to demonstrate the Windows Worker support in Enterprise PKS 1.5. At the end of this demo, you will learn how to enable Windows support in, in a PKS environment, create Windows Worker based clusters, and deploy a .NET application to your Kubernetes cluster. So let's get started. We're going to start with the Operations Manager 2.6 environment and a PKS 1.5 tile. Both of these tiles can be found on Pivotal Network. And the documentation to install these tiles can be found on Pivotal Docs. Great. So once these tiles are configured, we can now specifically go into enabling Windows worker based plans. As you can see in the PKS style configuration, there are 13 potential plans available. Plans 11 to 13 are specifically for enabling Windows worker based support. So let's go into plan 11. Let's activate this plan. You can see that there are some details about the plan, like such as name, description. We can add in the description that this is specifically a Windows worker based Kubernetes cluster. You can see the number of masters is three. We can make this one since it's a demo environment. For production, it's recommended three. We can enable the availability zones for the master. You can see the worker number of worker node instances is five. For the demo, we can keep it to three. And also enable the worker availability zone. That's it. Once we have sort of enabled these properties, we can go ahead and save these changes. Go back to my installation dashboard. I can see that the enterprise PKS style has a missing stem cell. So let's go into the stem cell library. Looking here, Previously, uh, PKS style required the Ubuntu stem cell only, Ubuntu Xenial stem cell only. Now it has a requirement for the Windows stem cell as well. I've already uploaded the stem cell, so we can go ahead and straight away assign it and save those assignments. That's it. Once I've done this, I can now go ahead and review the changes and go ahead and deploy the tile. Specifically, we want to go into and, and deploy the PKS style. This tile will ensure that the changes to enable a Windows worker based plan are configured with the PKS API. Great, now that the ch those changes have been applied, we can now go ahead and interact with the PKS CLI as well as the Cube Control CLI. Both of these, both of those CLIs can be downloaded from the Pivotal Container Service tile. You can see here there are CLIs both for PKS as well as Cube Control. Let me go ahead and log in with the PKS CLI. Great. Now I'm logged in with the PKS CLI. I can go ahead and review the plans that are, are currently available. We can see that there are two plans available. One, a small plan to create a lightweight Kubernetes cluster, as well as a plan 11 for in conf configuring a large Windows worker based Kubernetes cluster. Fantastic. Now that I have this available, I can go ahead and use this to create a cluster. I'm also providing an external host name. That way I can use that to target the particular cluster. Now once this cluster creation has started, I can go ahead and monitor the cluster creation using the PKS cluster command with providing the cluster name itself. So you can see 
that the cluster is is in creation progress now because at this time is when the actual cluster is getting created along with the master and the worker vms this could take about 15 to 20 minutes so let's let let this happen over the next 15 20 minutes great let's look at if the cluster has been created successfully we can use the window pks cluster Windows cluster demo command to actually see if the cluster has been created successfully. Awesome, looks like it has. I've also gone ahead and created a DNS entry to map the Kubernetes master host with the Kubernetes master IP. I can now use the PKS get credentials command to get the Kubernetes configuration. This is an important inflection point. As the role of the PKS API and CLI is complete, we can now use the kubectl CLI to access the cluster. I can also use the kubectl proxy command to get the dashboard for this particular cluster to view the resources deployed. Great. We can see that the Kubernetes service is the only service that's deployed in this cluster. We can go into the nodes and see what are the, sort of the various nodes deployed. There are four nodes here that you can find. We had specified three nodes in the plan. There's an additional fourth node for system services. Awesome, let's go and look into one of these. You can see that the Windows Worker node, this is a Windows Worker node, and specifically has the Windows Server 2019 deployed. Awesome. We can now go ahead and deploy a sample .NET application. Let's look at the manifest for it. I've specified a service as well as a deployment. And I'm using, if you look at the image itself, you can see that I'm referring to the Microsoft IS Docker image. Awesome, let's go ahead and deploy this. Great, let's go ahead and see in the dashboard if there are new resources that have been created. Awesome, we now see there's, an, there's a new deployment called the base IIS server, as we had mentioned, and we have one particular pod corresponding to it. To, ac to access the service itself that was created, we can use the service information. So let's go ahead and look at the services. We can see that the base IS server has been deployed to this particular port. So a combination of this port and the node IP that, that can be retrieved from the nodes section, we can see the actual application being deployed. And grab that port. Great. There we go. And here's our sample .NET application deployed. So we have completed successfully enabling the Windows Worker plan, deployed a PKS with Windows cluster, and deployed a .NET pod to the Kubernetes cluster. Thank you for watching and hope this was useful to you.